why? Why, when we've spent billions of dollars, millions of man hours, do people in Somalia, for example, have to go from one puddle in the road to another for water for their family and their livestock? Or in Kenya, the women each morning go out from the village, trek six kilometers or more for a source of water to bring back to their family. And then when they find it, it's either a dried up mud hole or some poor source. And then they carry it back to the village. Think what that girl might otherwise be doing in school, learning, improving her education. Or the women, the elder women, could be teaching or engaged in some activity such as sewing, growing produce, or something of that nature. Why is it? Why is it that these women have to go deep down in this well for water to bring it up to the surface? Why is it that this poor kid has to drink water from this pond where livestock also come and drink and do other things? It's full of all kinds of fecal matters, parasites, and what have you. Why is it? Why is it that 900 million people, one in six, don't have access to safe water? And when I say access, I don't mean a faucet in the kitchen or a water point in the backyard. I mean water within 300 meters of the house. They lack access. Even worse, 2.5 billion lack access to safe sanitation. Sanitation could be the gutter at the side of the road or the trees behind the house, or in some small houses in Nairobi, in Kenya, in Kibera, the, uh, the toilet, maybe sheet of newspaper in the corner of a 10 by 10 home where 10 people live. We spent billions, and yet people are still suffering like that. And every now and then, you'll get a half-decent toilet. At least it offers some privacy and some protection from the elements from tri the tribal people or animals looking for a safe breakfast. This lack of access has a profound implication on virtually everything that's been discuss discussed so far. Disease and health, waterborne disease accounting for a huge number of people in hospital dying and so forth. Three million cases a year of trachoma, river blindness, caused again by water, diarrheal disease, intestinal worms, guinea worms, and so forth, all waterborne. When the girls have to go and fetch water like that, they're not in school, they're not learning. It has a huge cumulative impact on the development of the village and the development of the community, as well as the development of the individual. Child mortality, in some of these countries, 150 children out of every thousand born die within the first five years of life. Contrast that with this country, what, 17, something like that. Gender equality are major issues. I don't even need to mention that any further. You just look at these pictures and recognize that there is not a lot of equity. And poverty and hunger goes without saying. Water access was the only millennium goal agreed upon by the United Nations in 2000. And that goal was reduced by 50%. The number or the proportion of people without access to safe water and sanitation by 2015. We're making progress in some parts of the world, Asia and Latin America, but in Africa, we're falling behind. Yet there's been billions of dollars, hours spent addressing this issue, and yet we're not getting anywhere. Money's been spent drilling boreholes, digging wells, rainwater harvesting, Filtration, purification, some complex, some very simple, such as a plastic bottle in which the ultraviolet light from the sun will purify the water. Dams and pipelines, latrines and toilets. And every now and then, you get an effective solution. Here, built by the homeowners, empowered to build their own rainwater harvesting system. There's a good-looking gray-haired guy over there, but ignore him. The important thing is, this is 10 thousand liters, 10 cubic meters, and that will see that household through the dry season. Or in the slum in Nairobi, building a toilet block to overcome that issue of lack of safe sanitation. But too little has been achieved. 70%, and this is a figure published by, the UNICEF, by UNICEF, 70% of the 
project, shall we say, to relieve water and sanitation a failure. Why? In many cases, because we in North America, in the high economy world, we are the, let's say, the, 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 we have the technology, we know the answers to every problem, so we go over there and solve the problems for them. We don't empower them as Kurumbu said we should. We solve that for them and create a dependency. Very often, somebody will come to you or your church group or a Rotary Club and say, ah, we have this wonderful device which will filter water. I, they only cost $50. I'd like you to buy a 1,000 of these and ship them over to this small island on Lake Victoria where the people are drinking feces and polluted water. A wonderful opportunity. Or somebody says, we're drilling wells around the world. Give us $16,000 and we can drill wells to bring water to a community in Africa. Supply driven. It's like that proverb, you know, to a hammer, everything is a nail. Or we have a solution looking for a problem. We don't think holistically in many cases. We'll focus on drilling wells and the result of our effort is a well or not a well. We don't think of the impact this will have on the humanity in that whole community. Little attempt to get the community to take ownership, to be empowered. We want to retain control. You remember the golden rule. The man with the gold makes the rules. We so often have the money, therefore we should be making the rules. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. Another point I made there was behavior change. If we could just encourage these people to wash their hands after being to the toilet, we'd reduce by 45% the incidence of diarrheal disease. Rotary, fortunately, which I represent here, is getting results. It's not easy, but they're working in the right direction. We don't tell the community what to do. The local Rotary Club out there in the village of Mbali in Uganda, for example, will sit down with the community and say, what is the problem? How can we help you? You, the community, decide what you want. You know how much you can afford. You know how much you're prepared to commit in terms of labor and ongoing financial resource to sustain this thing empower the community, and I was delighted when Mumba mentioned that issue. We have to empower the local people, not create dependency. We have to adapt to the local culture. You know, if we're in business selling products to China, we don't start out with our standard approach. Now, this is how the way we do business here in North America or in Denver. Let's go and do the same thing in China. No, we're not that stupid. We go over to China, we talk to the people, we understand how they want to do business and adapt accordingly. We need to adapt accordingly where we're involved in humanitarian efforts. We have to adapt to the local culture. These are some of the examples. Um, over 2,500 projects currently underway in more than 100 countries. For example, um, in Mumbai, the Rotary Club there slowed the fast-running water at monsoon time. A small series of small check dams, hand dug, slowed the water and recharged the aquifer so there would be a continuous supply of safe water. That community was transformed. Previously, they used the monsoon rains to grow a crop of rice, relatively low value. Once, however, they were able to slow the water down and have a year-round supply, they were able to gain three cash crops a year. Or in a slum in Nairobi, in uh, Kibera, water um, facilities, just so again, the local people can come and access safe water. In the Dominican Republic, Rotarians built a factory to manufacture slow sand filters. Filter about this side, which will purify the water and make it safe to drink and get rid of all kinds of pathogens, microorganisms, occasionally not all the viruses, but it certainly purify the water so it's safe to drink. And in some cases, Rotarians are giving plastic bottles, not unlike this, fill it with the polluted water, put it on the corrugated roof, Eight hours later, the combination of ultra, ultraviolet light and raising a temperature will render it portable. The fact that I'm standing before you here today suggests that it works. Emphasize also um, hand washing and involve the community. As you can see, this is one example. This well has just been opened. The community and the friendly Rotarian on the left-hand side celebrating this advent of safe water. You can all help. Understand the situation. Create awareness. Talk to your friends about it. Get involved in a dialogue about the world water and sanitation situation. And of course, 
though I'm emphasizing the developing world, let's also not ignore some of the situations here in this country. The Ogallala Aquifer, the Rio Grande, Atlanta, and other places where we have a serious water situation. But understand the reality of international development, which is this question of empowerment and sustainability. If you have expertise in anything to do with water, volunteer your time. Maybe you're involved in the water system locally. Maybe you're skilled at writing proposals to international agencies to help the Rotary Club locally get another $2 million, for example, from a corporation or foundation. Everybody has a talent which can be useful. And for the students, have you ever thought about going over to, let's say, to Africa or to Latin America or to Asia and working on some of these water projects? There's an opportunity there. Talk to your local Rotary Club. There are several here in Denver, wonderful groups of people. They'd love to talk with you and explain how you can become part of that team. Lastly, this organization, WASRAG, stands for Water and Sanitation Rotarian Action Group. Thousands of Rotarians around the world linked in a horizontal organization, not unlike the last speaker was referring to, working together to facilitate, to raise money, to provide expertise, help the world address this water and sanitation program. So, when you leave here, go to www.wasrag.org. If any of you have any questions, please go there and send me in. Unfortunately, I can't stay. I've got to be in Winnipeg this evening for another session on water. But thank you very much for letting me share these ideas from you, with you, and I hope to hear more from all of you. Thank you very much.